Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number 5, targeting the C major chord. Get ready and some coffee, because we're about to set the music record straight by putting it into Excel. Mainly because I can't draw a straight line by hand, so I can't set the record straight that way. But I am excellent at setting the record straight using Excel. Although, Excel's really the one doing most of the record straightening. But whatever, let's do it. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but did so in prior presentations. So if you wanna build this from a blank worksheet, you may wanna begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, the scale, the chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, currently like 10 tabs down below, a bunch of these example tabs and the OG orange tab, the OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section. It now acting as our starting point going forward, mapping out the entire fretboard, mapping out the entire musical alphabet in letters, numbers, and combining them together, providing us a key that can be adjusted with this green cell, which changes the scale keys that were in in our worksheet to the right providing us all the notes in that key chord constructions from the notes in that key and interval information we then wanted to look at the key of c major think about all the chord constructions in open position to start with and we did that starting with the one chord over here so we took the one chord we took the one three five created the one chord and mapped it out in position uh, zero or an open position, which I'm going to define as frets zero through three. We then did the same thing, but jump into the four chord because it has also a major chord construction, which is the F major chord mapped it out. We then went to the five chord G major chord mapped it out back up to the minors. We went to the two chord, which is the D minor chord. We mapped it out, went to the three chord, the E minor chord mapped it out and then to the sixth chord, A minor, mapped it out, and finally the diminished, we mapped it out. We then, if I go to the worksheet on the right, uh, we have now basically mapped out in open position in kind of a fun, the most fun type of way to start with everything uh, that is in the scale. So I'm gonna unhide some cells, and I will get to actually the guitar here, so I'm not just gonna do intervals the whole time, but I wanna start from the same point we were at ended last time in case you're following along and you want to adjust your worksheets with me so i'm going to unhide uh from e over to the to the left right click and unhide so we can see the frets on the right uh did i do that right hold on i'm not sure i did that. i'm going to control z i think i hid them i'm that's an undo and i'm trying to unhide not hide okay so then if i if i go down here uh, we can see that basically what we did when we mapped out all these chords is make a scale if you were put to, if you were to put them all together. We're using all the notes in this scale. So we kind of learned the scale, but we did so with chords. And then we jumped up to, uh, I'm going to say fret five, to think about uh, the middle of the guitar and try to think about it not with chords to start out with, but with scales. So now we can practice our scales and we can practice our chords, but we can do so in different places and then we can combine this together. So we did this with the pentatonic scale up top in, in the famous pentatonic position. I would call it position one or a G-shaped position. And then we added the major notes on top of it. So now we have the entire shape here that we are playing. So we've discussed it in detail. What we want to do now is try to link it to what we've learned uh, in open position. So we want to be thinking of ourselves in uh, the key of C and say, okay, how can I basically link what I have over here in a scale format to what I've kind of learned over here in the chord format? All right, so to do that, I'm going to unhide some cells over here because we left off last time with a minor construction. So I'm going to put my cursor on BG to BI, right click and unhide. Oh man, I did it again. I hid instead of unhide. Right click and unhide. Uh, what in the world are you doing? So there's the minor, and then I'll go between these two and right-click and unhide. Okay, so now we should have the major over here. So there's our major, and let's just bring it out to the end of this position. Let's go to position uh, 
9 or to fret 9 and I'm going to bring this to the major right click and hide all right so that's going to be what we'll be working with move that up a bit and maybe we can even zoom in a bit on it so we can zoom in a bit possibly towel vase and so there we have it so now we're going to be on looking at chord number one and i'll map out the 135 over this whole piece so this is the open position and this is our uh, fret number five so to do that i'm going to hit the dots up top and i'm going to i'm going to say show me the ribbon at least for now and then let's go to the home tab and we're going to go to conditional formatting I'm going to say that this is equal to the C. Let's make that green. And so we'll make that green and then drop down. And we're going to say, let's go to the E and make that red. And then let's go to the drop down and go to the G and make that yellow. Okay. And so then I'll populate this format, paint this on this side too. So there's our C formatting, the one. Here's our three. And then here's our uh, five. Now, if I was to finger this in open position, let's actually make these uh, uh, red. I'll make them red. So we're going to say, usually we would finger, this would be our C fingering, right? We'd say C there, and then there, and then this would be open. And then we'd put our finger there and there. So we learned this over here in the C tab, right? There's our position and, uh, and that's what we have on this side. I should have copied this over to the right. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy that over here. I should have, I'm holding down control copying to the right and I'm going to name it. Uh, this is going to be practice, the practice tab and I'll, I'm calling it uh, fret pentatonic, let's say fret, fret five C major, C major, uh, chord that we're going to be dealing with. We'll do that for now. And I'm going to right click. Let's make that blue, right clicking and make that blue. Okay. So there we have it. And then I'm going to minimize my screen up top full screen mode. All right, so there we have it. So now I know this is kind of ugly in terms of the colors, but just to recall the color scheme, uh, the the everything that's selected is going to be in the major the major scale. So if I look down here, then th this would be all of our seven notes mapped out. And then we made the green ones. If they are green, that means it's going to be one of the five out of seven. The only ones that would not be green are the are the four and the seven if we didn't have then map this on top of it. So the green ones uh, are, are the ones that are the five out of the seven notes for the pentatonic. And then the ones that are this color, these colors are the ones that are going to fit within both the major scale as well as the pentatonic scale. And that's going to be the one uh, three five of our actual chord that we're targeting. That's going to be the C major chord. And then this shape represents uh, the, the, the fingering that we would actually put in open position. So now, of course, if we're, if we're thinking of open position here, we, have, we can play any of these chords in open position. So I can go from my, my C to my F to my G back to my C. And then I'm going to say, well, how can I kind of navigate from there into into my scale position, which I would think about starting on fret five, even though there's this note over here when you're looking at the major construction, whether I'm thinking of it from a pentatonic shape position or the full major scale shape position. So the pentatonic, remember, is boom, 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 boom. And the major. Right, so, so one way we can do that, we discussed a little bit last time, is to target the root note. So I can look at that root note and I can say there's my C's, there's my C's, and there's my C's. So if I'm if I'm just playing something over here, if I'm noodling around in a C, I can play any of these chord constructions from the uh, from the C major scale. So I can go from a C to an F, right, to a G, back to a C, 
and then I can basically possibly lead up, possibly following one of these fingers. Here's my uh, finger that's on the C right here, and then maybe lead that into my into my position. So now I would lead that into my position over here. So we're now in boom, and then I and then I can noodle around and maybe end on this C up top, right? So I kind of went do do do. Do, and now it kind of feels like home a little bit. So we talked about that a little bit last time. The other thing that you might want to know, what, what, whatever you're playing over here, if you're like, okay, this is my C uh, chords that I'm playing. W is there another C chord over here that I can find home in? So that I don't feel like I'm going like, okay, I'm over here and then I'm like, and then I have to jump back over here to get home. One way to get home over here is to say, I'm not going to play the whole chord. I'm just going to play that one note. And that still kind of feels like home. But you can also say, well, what if I, what if I built a C chord over here that's in this shape? So to do that, you'd have to find the C, E, and the G. So if I was to find that, if I was to say, look at that C, what am I going to do to build a C chord? Now, most people would build a C chord going up, right? You'd be up here and then you would build the shape, you know, going this way. But that's outside of our, that's outside of our, our shape. We can also build it going backwards, which is less common because people are going to jump to bar chords. But it's useful to know because even if you're not playing that shape, you can noodle around and you can, you can arpeggiate the shape, right? So we learned, like when we learned these shapes over here, we saw that, this, that the, the third is going to be down one and back one. So you can say, okay, the third's always going to be right there. So even if you even if you don't know where the fifth is going back, or even if you can't reach it, then you get a more of a resolution sound playing those two, which you can play like this. Or if I'm noodling around over here, you might put your pinky up there, which is a little bit more difficult to do. So that gives you kind of a resolution found because because you set you have you have the the two major components that make it a major. C, the root and the third, the third being different uh, than, than a minor. But you also can see that you have the G down here. So if you wanted to play the whole thing, you know, you could play it like this. Now there's a couple different fingerings that people could do. You can use your pinky up here. So that's uh, fairly comfortable, although you're reaching with your pinky. If your hands are a little bit bigger, you can actually reach over here with your, with your ring. <laughs> And you can actually strum that. Most people don't think of that of that uh, chord as often, but it's not too difficult to play, and it gives you it gives you that C chord in this position. Now, the other way you can think about this is that this is a G shape, right? So we so, and we'll talk about this more in the uh, when we get into the caged system. But notice if you if you think about it, you're going to say, okay, this boom, boom, boom. That's the that's a G type of shape over here, right? There's my G shape uh, here. When I move it up here, it's not a G anymore, but if I was to move those fingers up, I have the G shape. These three strings are, are open. I can't really play those using that same fingering, but I can still use it to target and say, okay, well, wait, that's kind of like, I can just deconstruct this shape and use pieces of it to do what I want to do with it. Cause I don't need all uh, six strings. I, I can do what I want uh, with just three notes, right? Of the, even two notes would be fine. So, so and this, so this you can think about this. Then this shape right here is part of that G, is part of that G shape. That's the upper component uh, of that G shape. Now, also just remember, nobody, mostly nobody, actually tries to bar out that G shape, right? You could try it, right? You could try to bar that out that's going to be difficult uh but it doesn't mean it's it's useless it's not like what's well, like well that's a you that's the cage system has that move up there but no one uses that because you can't possibly play that unless you're crazy you got some crazy fingers or something right but that's not the point the point the point is that that it's going to give you an anchor in position and then you can you can visualize it that way and then you can take it apart to do what you need because you only need three notes in order to make a chord and you don't even need three notes really to, to really visualize the fact that you're arpeggiating those are the major chords that you're kind of targeting so one way that you can take those three is up here 
and the other one is down here. So we've got this shape down here. So I can play, uh, the, so we can play then, the, 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 and that looks like an A shape, right? Most people would call that an A shape. If it was an A bar chord, you would be reaching back to this one. So we could reach back to this one and that would make it uh, an A type of bar chord, but we're playing actually a C chord but the reason we call it an A is because if it was over here in open position, it would be an A. So it's an A shape that we moved up here. But, but note, if you just play this, it, you can see it as either an A bar type shape or part of the G bar type shape. Uh, because, because that's the, the ridge point between the two. In order to call it a full A type bar shape, you'd have to reach back to pick up this note, the root note. Otherwise, uh, this is also part of this shape up here, right? It's the same thing. So you can see it either way, but the, the point is that you can see, okay, there's another another shape I can use and I can, fi I can finger it with just one finger like that. I don't really have to reach back to that full bar chord. I could, but if I'm up here noodling around and I need to end on a C, then I can bar, I can bar that off and that should take me you basically back home it's an inversion because the c is not the lowest uh the lowest note in the chord but it's still going to be a c major chord so you can you can use that one that's another one to target and then you've got this bit down here which is a little bit more difficult right so these two you've got the 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 root and the fifth above it and so you so so like if i was to play those at the same time you get that high, that higher, whoops, over here, <laughs> here it is. Uh, so if you, but if you wanted to pull in the third, you're missing the third, right? So that's kind of like a power chord because it only has uh, the one and five, but it's kind of inverted. The, there is a third up here. So that's kind of a weird construction of it. You could try to play those two and then the E back here. So you're kind of arpeggiating back to the E. So those are, those are basically the home base in terms of the actual chords. So now if I'm, if I'm playing over here and I'm just noodling just in the key, just basically in the key of C and then just trying to put some stuff in between it just to play around with this key to see where I can, where, what I can do with it. Now I can, I can move up to this position, possibly leading in with this finger so I'm not losing sight of the guitar. I'm going to target something as I move in. And I'm like, okay, now I'm in this position. And when I'm in this position, then I might try to noodle around up here. I can do anything I want within this shape. But then I might want to end on a C. And I could try to end on the C instead of just ending like that. I might try to end with a little bit more of a note right I can follow any of these any of these strings in the other one to follow in is often going to be this one down here right I could follow this string in if I'm noodling around so now I'm just going to say all right I followed that string into my fingering position so that's my anchoring string now and I'm on this fret so I can be like okay I know I can I could do that kind of whatever there. And I know that my uh, C is right there. So that'll basically end it if I wanted to, if I wanted to, to end it right there, or there's my, there's my C and my G, like a power chord inverted, which kind of sounds like a resolution type of tone. Or I can, of course, once I'm in here, can end it with these three right I'm just noodling around and then I'm like I'm gonna be like going here and if I want to go back home I could do the same thing I'm gonna maybe f sit on this string right here because I know that my C is right there right and I could follow that home so there's my C right there which I could play this way which is my a shape the same three over here or I might change it back now I'm playing a C, A, so I can move my fingers. And when I place these fingers, I'm usually starting 
camera and I'm putting my fingers down so I can so I'm trying to find a way that I can slide in here and you, prob you probably want to do that in a way that you're not like taking your fingers totally off and then because you're not going to know where the fingers are going at least at first so you might you might say okay I'm going to tar how am I going to slide in there is basically what the thing is so I'm going to slide in there most likely with this finger and that'll take me to this position which puts me right into my 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 nice fingering position and then I can end basically in here so so the other thing obviously if you're playing any of these other chords in open position you know you could be playing go to your F go to the G C and you can add any of these other notes in there and noodle around you can take your fingers off and possibly when you get to that C then that's when you you might put a little emphasis on it to kind of end that's another way to kind of round it out like when you're noodling around I'm on a C going to an F going to a G and then I'm going to a C but I'm kind of ending it off with a little round off so I'm gonna go Know that so now I can kind of end it at that point if you if you want to use it that way so that you can have a little extension at the end which which is works pretty well you can also if you're noodling around C to an F to a G instead of going back to the C instead of going back to the C you go C F G and then end it, you know, in here somewhere, right? With, I'm trying to end it with basically these three. So you're gonna end your phrase targeting there. And so what you wanna do is, is have some kind of idea of what you're targeting in here. Otherwise, what you end up doing is you're, you don't, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna stumble on something that sounds cool, but you're not gonna know, you're not gonna have any idea of like where you're going. Cause you wanna always be thinking, I'm trying to create tension and then resolve the tension. That's the whole, that's the whole musical thing, right? We're trying to create, so we're on home. I'm trying to create some tension. I'm going away from home with a, with a, uh, uh, an F to a G. I'm still not home yet. And I'm going to noodle around. Ah, home, right? So that's the kind of idea that you, so, and you can't do that unless you have some idea of what, what basically, uh, you're targeting in here so and so so which we want to get good at is basically sliding in possibly with this finger and possibly with this finger and then saying where's home there's home where's home there's home with those these three notes where's home there's home and that sounds kind of nice too because if you play this leading note going into home that's one of the nice things about the major chord construction right you get that lead into it you can play it up here right you get that leading tone so so and now the once you once you do that you could also target then instead of targeting the root note you might target the third and so so that's going to be your secondary kind of targeting note right so i'm still kind of thinking i'm i'm in the key of c but i'm but instead of being like too blatant about it being c ish i might be going in here and targeting like the e and that leaves you kind of hanging a little bit and then you might end it right here right back to the C over here right I'm just ending on the I, I ended on this E right so now I'm, I slid up I slid up to this E and I'm gonna work my way down to this E so I'm up here and I'm like okay and then I'm just stopping there and I'm letting it just hang on that E and then So, and then, and then of course the fifth is another, is the other one that's in the key that you can kind of target. Now the fifth doesn't have as much kind of emotional 
feeling uh, to it as the third, because the third is what gives it that major feel to it, because that's the distinguishing tone between the 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 major and the minor. But you can see you have your G. So there's a G right here, and there's a G right here. So if you were like, you know, slide. So I'm just basically noodling around and I'm trying to target those end things before I go back home. Now you could you could target something that's outside of of your notes entirely, right? I could like pick an A. If you do that, you probably and you know an A is at least in the pentatonic shape, right? Uh, so 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 that might sound. So I could try to target an A even though I'm on a C right here, and it should be okay even though that's not a note that's in the C chord at all, right? <laughs> That's going to make you feel even further away from home, right? Because you're no, you're not even, you're nowhere kind of close. You're not really close to the ones taking you home. And then you could t pick the ones that are outside of the pentatonic. The, the 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 B right here, for example, is gonna is gonna be that leading tone. So you kind of you kind of almost have to end it after that one, right? So if you're like, here's a B right there. So you're almost like it wants to go home right so if you play that if you play something with that b in it then you would think you'd have to you would generally want to resolve it unless you just want to keep people hanging right? <laughs> right so then you end it off with the with the end note on deciding if I want to play this like this. I keep on thinking it would be better to do that, but I can't reach. My hands are not quite big enough. Right, so that's so that's the general idea. Now, next time we'll, we'll try to target some of these other uh, uh, chords and still think of ourselves either as the key of C or in a related mode uh, to the key of C. But note that if you're kind of if you're kind of switching chords here, C, I'm going back to my standard F and a G and back to a C. When you go to an F, then of course you can target the notes in here, and you can do that still up top. So you can go up top and you can say, okay, now I'm targeting the notes in here, which will still include these three notes because I'm constructed my F from the key of C. However, you also have the ability to say, what if I what if I kind of move the shape to to where the F is, right? I can I can think of myself as saying I'm going to move the entire shape uh, to the related position on the fretboard, and so we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I don't want to get into that in a whole lot of detail right now uh, because we're gonna, because we really want to kind of we're kind of constructing everything around. Uh, the key of C right now, but I just want to mention that because that often is kind of a confusing thing. We'll probably mention it a little bit more once we get up to uh, playing doing the same thing, but in these other uh, in these other chords, right? So, so if you're playing something in the key of C, for example, and then you're switching to the F, you could basically go up here and still noodle around in a similar way as we did in open position, or you might try to look for the related shape that is in the F, uh, that is in, you know, F major, right? So we'll talk more about that later. You can also think of yourself with these same notes, these sa all these same notes as seeing yourself in the related mode here so that you're kind of playing as though the F is the one. And you can basically practice it that way, in which case you'd be using all of the same, uh, all of the same notes that way. But we'll get into that later. No rush, no rush. I said, no, Rush. I don't want any life insurance. Go away, Rush. Dang insurance salesman. Apparently, the sales school taught Rush to take no, no, not to take no for an answer. Now, it's sale time. So remember, we don't take no. No. Sh no. Uh, we don't take no prisoners. We don't take no for an answer. 
So no matter how many times you say no rush, rush just keeps on rushing. Anyways, uh, that's the general idea. We'll get into it next time. Oh yeah, we don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take